Can you please explain to our viewers what's going on with these two TVs behind you? Uh, behind uh, us, we have, uh, in fact, the answer, what is mini LED? As many people raise questions, uh, uh, how it works and uh, what is inside. So we have our latest C845 on the side. And side by side, we have the TV set, but without LCD screen. So you see how backlight operates and you can see how the zones and the uh, LEDs are driven. That uh, picture you see on this side, in fact, is replicated by brightness of the backlight on this side. Of course, we just put the screen to dim the light because the light is extremely bright as the light has to go through quantum dot enhancement film and also LCD panel to make the picture. Since you mentioned about the C845, you might as well tell us the specifications on the set. The TV set we launched this year is a significant improvement over the previous product C835. So in C845, we double number of dimming zones. Uh, it means that in 55 we have 480 zones, in 65 we have 576 zones, and then 720 in 75 and up to 896 zones in 85 inch. In terms of peak brightness, we go far above 2000 nits. I think in your test soon you will see that the TV set is able to reach 2200 uh, nits. But uh, another important thing is also average brightness because full white you should be able to see around 800 nits. So we always go step ahead and uh, to show that whatever living room you have, dark or bright, mini LED is always the best screen for you. Can you explain a bit more about the rest of your 2023 TV range? From, uh, I think, perspective or your uh, viewers, uh, the major focus is on C845 we talk about. Then one step below, we have also C745 and the very entry product is C645, but this is entry QLED with 50, 60 Hertz panel. So then let's focus on the 100 Hertz and above uh, products. So C745, peak brightness, 1000 nits, also a QLED product. We have also full array local dimming. We have something like 140 zones in 55 inch, 160 zones in 65 inch and 220 zones in 75 inch. Uh, then uh, this product is based on 144 hertz panel, but on top of this panel also can display 240 hertz in 4K, 1K. It means that for gaming, for HDMI, uh, you can get full HD in 240Hz from PC in VRR. And uh, then for TV content, you can also switch TV to 240 And uh, then in this case, depends on the content. It can be 200Hz or 240Hz. And the key benefit here is that uh, we don't do line doubling. We do line averaging which means uh, the picture is still smooth. You have a slight uh, drop of the vertical resolution, but it's not like in other products uh, when you have really stars visible on it. Then from gaming perspective, we provide a revised game bar. You saw the game bar with all the information which gamer needs. Then we also provide FreeSync Premium Pro certification with 144 UHD. So all gaming benefits you have, VRR is also part of the story. And then going a step up to 845, we talk already on peak brightness. We talk already about average brightness dimming zones. Then uh, we have also in 845 anti-reflection coating. So it absorbs reflections from ambient light. On the audio side, we have a subwoofer, which is built in. Will they be using the new Pentonic chipsets? In our product, you will see we continue evolution of the same chipset as last year, but Pentonic is part of our agenda and I hope uh, we will see again this year and you will be able also to assess this product based on Pentonic chipsets. So how many HDMI 2.1 ports are there on the C845 and C745? Uh, two ports which are 84 gig and two ports which are 18 gig. If we look from eARC perspective, eARC is still on this 18G port, so two are free for end user. 
And honestly, if you look from the uh, perspective of any end user, so how many real 2.1 sources you can have? So I believe that two 2.1 and additional two, where one is used for your soundbar or AVR, is fully sufficient uh, to cover all your needs. Why do you still not have an OLED in your 2023 TV lineup? I always like this kind of question from you. Thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Since the pandemic, some streaming providers, including Netflix, have throttled the bit rate of certain shows, especially in Europe, resulting in a softer picture with more compression artifacts. This is where a VPN comes in. Surfshark allows you to stream content from another country without needing you to be physically there, so you can watch Netflix at higher bit rates with better picture quality. Besides VPN, the new Surfshark One package also includes Surfshark Search, a lightweight search tool that lets you search the web without a trace. There's 24-7 live customer support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and if you use promo code HDTVTEST, you will get 83% off, as well as 3 extra months free. So sign up today and give Surfshark a try. I'll put a link in the YouTube description below. Thanks again for your support. Okay, back to the interview. We believe that Mini LED technology is uh, the technology which covers all the needs. So on the one side, with a uh, significant number of zones and high peak brightness, you can cover all the details in dark areas, bright areas. With adaptive picture or Dolby Vision IQ with light sensing, a TV can adapt to dark room and to the bright room. And then we come to your living room. Usually your living room is a bright room. You have many windows. That's why you need high average brightness to overcome all this ambient light around. So that's why for us, uh, me LED is the perfect solution for this year. Another reason is also vertical integration. The only way to be successful in the TV business is uh, to produce all the components by ourselves. And that's why if you look on this TV sets, the backlight, the screen, most of the components are produced by TCL group members like CSOT, like TCL factors. Once Inkjet or printed factory start production, why not? We will just add this technology also to our portfolio. You mentioned that the C745 has QLED technology. Can you please explain more for our viewers? Today, if you look on the market, uh, it's a matter of product price and accessibility. Uh, so then we also tailor made QLED technologies for users. One option is white color gamut backlight, this RG phosphor LEDs, and we can add green quantum dot. And by this, we achieve 93% of color gamut. If we want really to go to the maximum, reach the maximum, what uh, today makes sense in terms of color gamut achievement, so then we can go to around 97% and then we use a quantum dot enhancement film. Then you might ask why we cannot achieve more. Because at the end, it's a balance between the energy consumption and uh, then uh, what we can achieve uh, from uh, the color gamut. As the blue light, uh, for example, in 845 has to go through quantum dot enhancement film and then ha we have to convert it to the white light. And then it's more uh, the matter of the width of the beams, red and green, how much of the color gamut we can achieve. And then between these two technologies, there is also slight difference in terms of color volume, what products can achieve. But I think for most of the applications like streaming or like gaming, both will look very similar. Looking at your 2023 TV lineup, I don't think there is an 8K TV product. Is that the case here? 8K products, if you look from a worldwide perspective, we have in China. In Europe, what we see is the market is very small. And the major issue we see in Europe with 8K is lack of content. It's not like with 4K in the past uh, when uh, 4K products arrived to the market just after Netflix pop up with uh, UHD content and then it was significantly supported by the content production. We had 8K products on the market uh, in Europe. We uh, have it in China and we believe that for sizes like 85 inch, 98 and above 100 inch, 
8K is a correct solution because you see closer, so you need more pixels. But would you not say that it's because of the EU power regulation as well? Well, you saw that there are ways to overcome this EU power regulation. So then out of the box mode can be extremely dark. And uh, then if a user wants to use TV set in other mode, can use other mode. But uh, if you really look on the market, which is 0.1% in many countries, so it is absolute fraction uh, from uh, perspective of the product development and the efforts you have to put to master the product. So that's why we believe that for us, UHD, Mi LED, and then high performance like C845 and products which will come in the future is the correct direction for this year. In China, TCL actually announced a really high spec mini LED TV with 5,000 zones and 5,000 nits of peak brightness. I think the model number is called X11G. Will we see an equivalent model in Europe and maybe the US? If you look on how TCL is introducing products to the market, so you see that uh, everything starts from China our major market and then step by step is going to other markets. So usually products launch in China also pop up in other markets. Then in a few months we should see at IFA and uh, I hope you will be able uh, to see more products coming from TCL, which is more affordable, more mini LED products and in high-end segment. Yes, I certainly look forward to seeing you at IFA and before that, maybe reviewing one of your sets. I really appreciate the openness and transparency that you have given us in this interview. And I'm hoping that my viewers will appreciate the interview and learn more about TCL TVs. Thank you, Marek. Thank you, Vincent. And thank you that you come here to Poland.